watching the clock, 10,000 hours go by. I keep putting in work, the tears are filling my eyes. I swear I've never been tested like this, but this is mine. It's not a matter of chance, just a matter of time. Never look back. If something's standing in my way, I always push back. If something seemed impossible, I never took that. Nah, cause now I know better. Can't stop, won't stop, I won't quit ever. matchup Hanwha Life Esports King's Own Dragon X BBQ Olivers SK Telecom T1 The Fantastic Run Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another day of LCK Summer 2018. I'm Atlas. This is, of course, always Papa Smithy. And we've got an exciting match. We've only got a couple more days before the team's going to be heading off to Rift Rivals, and we've got a couple of them here today trying to get themselves off on the right foot. And speaking of who we have here today, you hear a big roar from the Korean crowd. That's because we have a special guest on the Korean side. Mad Life will be guesting today. You can see him on your screen right now. Always great to have him here, Cloud yeah. Templar and Mad Life. Of course, old Azubu, MIB, MIG, and CJ uh, teammates from many, yeah. many moons ago. So cool to have them there. It was good to pick his brain. His English is still great. Turns out he's still got a brain for those esports. So cool to have him here. And honestly, a fun matchup to start as it's one old Rocks Tigers lineup versus another old Rocks Tigers lineup. <laughs> yeah, although a little bit confusingly stated. And we're. We might be missing one if Cuz is going to play yet again because he has been the guy for Kingzone to bring them back. Their 2-0 victory over SKT was certainly an impressive one. So it might be down a potential Rocks Tiger. But still kind of the org history yeah, is there, right. right? Definitely teams that know a bit about the Rocks Tigers and a lot of names the fans know as well. Should be competitive. We never really know with Hanwha Life Esports as we oh also see another celebration. So it is Costa John or Korean hype guy You're on the English global sides birthday tomorrow so it's going to be a big day for him today as well a lot of people here celebrating so a lot of gifts come his way very very popular man through multiple esports oh yeah he's one of the ogs started casting video games in 1999 long long time ago older than some of the players we have in this league and helps even us on this feel match yes old less Ooh. old as well papa smithy we need to have a it's guy difficult out to get there that. like caster jun exactly in esports a young man's game is difficult to get that little bit of a buff up yeah exactly. also it was kobe's birthday uh, I believe yesterday or the day before. Yeah, he's also older than me, so I'll take that, oh, Kobe. Oh, there we are. Older than me, too. That's yeah, right. yeah, there we go. Not Thank much, though. Thankfully, not much. <laughs> yeah, it's only a few months or something, isn't it? But we'll but take every month we can get, Atlas. Let's go back to League of Legends, Papa Smithy. Oh. We've got pick band percentages here. Nocturne, pretty good at the moment, and the team seem to know it, having 20 bands already on 8-12. 21 games, and you see 21 games for Nocturne, Zoe, Talia, and almost the Morgana and Aatrox to joining them, Sejuani is a pick that was already starting right at the end of 8-11. And now is there in terms of priority. So the priority list is kind of very, very singular. It seems like teams know yeah. what they want. We're already talking about six champions that are basically involved in every game. So gonna be a lot of these same picks. Seems like Sejuani versus Trundle is every single match where Sejuani is up. Yep. The Nocturne, the only team to let it through was Griffin. They played with fire and it burned them. First week, Alistair answered by a Nocturne. And scores Nocturne was looking pretty damn good. Yeah, I believe that was one of the fastest, well, in that series, that was the fastest game of the season at uh, under 20 minutes. So definitely a shellacking there for KT versus Griffin. However, as you can see, 
despite the standings, Griffin still reign supreme. There's that one notch that they uh, they hiccuped through with KT. However, still up there, but Genji hot on their heels. The teams we see today, not necessarily up the top like you'd expect from a team like King's Own Dragon X, but I'm on Life Esports right underneath them and want to try and take them down a peg in order to leapfrog them up the standings. We'll see whether they can, because a plus five scoreline definitely means that they can both switcheroo. Let's introduce our first teams first. So Hummer Life Esports will be beginning on the blue side. And I guess there's only one question when it comes to roster, and that is who is going to be playing in that mid lane. And uh, it is going to be Lava once again. Not going to be out again. Trying to lead on the fans. I just there's want been no Kuzan. Kuzan games. I want him so none. bad. There's been none. I know, but I don't care. I don't care. He's... Neither does Hanwha Life Esports. Well, they your do. Opinion. They do. They no. absolutely love him because they put him on all the posters. Man, he's, he's handsome. handsome. Man. Handsome man, he gets on the post. He's not into the starting lineup though. Damn I guess right. scrims. He's gonna have to grind a little bit harder. And will life esports on a really good run. Smashed MVP in the first game on Wednesday. Took down the Afrika Freaks as well. So how will they fare? Because this is the team that has always been that watershed moment. If you're worse than Hanwa, they crush you. Yep. If you're better than Hanwa, traditionally, they, that's where they've stumbled. They are the gut check team. If you're one of the top teams, you should be able to get through them. However, if you're a bottom team, you will get destroyed like Jin Air BBQ and MVP did. But let's speak of teams that have been doing some destroying recently, and it is King's Own Dragon X. Yes, they fell to Griffin 0-2. That was not a great time for them. However, the 2-0 over SKT was dominant, and it will be Cuz in the jungle. So we're only going to have a couple of Rocks Tigers this time around on King's Own, but Cuz was impressive and played that Rakan as well in that final composition that we did see against SKT. It's funny, but... However long he spends out of the lineup, he slots in really well. It always looks like he hasn't missed it a beat. It feels like he gets charged up and then comes in swinging. He's not a new player. He still is the same player. I think on primary initiation, that's kind of been the one thing that always tripped him up. But he's still a very powerful player. Sometimes it seems the synergies are easier with yeah. his solo lanes, with his duo lane. So it's fun to see him in well-deserved performances. Camille, that was really fearsome. We could see more of it today. Yeah, of course, paired up with the Shen made it look Completely ridiculous, but Hanwha Life coming off a couple of victories, one of them being an unexpected one. Them taking down Afrika Freaks, although it was a hard slog for the Hanwha roster, certainly was impressive that they managed to take them down. And then they just took MVP. Oh, I, there's there's not a lot of things that you can say on air to describe what they did. They took them thing. apart, I guess we'll say. Yeah, that's an easy for one. For that particular one, as we look some of these pentagons, big pentagon for the man who will hit 400 games there, that's Prey. Big anniversary for him. I'm sure OGN will show us a little overlay to confirm when he gets, I believe it's second game of the night. Yeah. Prey, one of our legends, Prey and Gorilla, still repping. Yep, Sung Yun, though, definitely destroying him when it comes to that KDA, but he has been having a little bit more help, I guess, by picking up a lot more of his team's kills. But King's Own Dragon X definitely have had the number of Hanwha Life Esports. As far as that gut check is concerned, they have certainly been successful in the past. Oh, Rocks Tigers. More wins usually is the way to go on Wild Life <laughs> Esports. The former Rocks Tigers organization, Prey Gorilla and Peanut on the bench, representing the most famous iteration of the Rocks Tigers. And let's look at some first turret win rates. Someone's streaks going down, you'd yeah. imagine. It could still stay undefeated. That would, of course, end up being a 2-1 if it went through. What we just see, first turret equals victory. That's something to watch. Yeah, and it's also really cool to see that Hanwha Life Esports often get that top turret first off, showing that Linderung certainly has turned around what have been some disappointing performances in other seasons, certainly not this time around. There's only a few champions that he actually has losses on, having been able to succeed on a lot of them, but Key is the guy we're going to be highlighting with the fact that Morgana has leapfrogged over Tom Kench as far as one of our sort of top supports on the bottom side of the map, and Key has always been a brilliant caster support, Good to see that he has got the stats to back that up as well. An 8-12 should be good for this player. 80% kill participation for a support and first in the league. Really big cheer for him as well. His bard the most famous. I'd always oh, look yeah. forward to seeing it. And what a huge cheer from the crowd here for Sang Yoon versus Prey. Now both <laughs> veterans of the game. Prey's looking over and seeing that actually Sang Yoon's got some numbers bigger than his. The kills per game inflated by that mid lane Funnel on the Kaiser, a lot of KDA on that pick, but it's probably going to be a mid lane special for Bray. It's back to the bread and butter. Turns out his Ezreal as good as ever. Yeah, pretty damn good. Six and one. 
Certainly has been a pick like that. <laughs> well, they're ready to have a good time today, at least. That is certainly fantastic. This crowd is going to lose their mind when we yeah. actually start the game. They're already losing their mind before we start, as I think the fans' minds will be on the way of the Dragons. I have a feeling the King's Own Dragon X should certainly have the match prediction, but I don't know whether it's necessarily that far apart because Hanwha Life are coming off two very impressive victories. King Zone only off one, but they still definitely have the hearts of our fans here purely because they are the champions of the LCK. Most beloved bot lane in the world are Prey and Gorilla. Cool to see them playing here. We have Mad Life casting for one of his old teammates. BDD was on the roster back in 2016. King Zone Dragon X on the up. They beat SKT in pretty convincing fashion, but that series was quite the fiesta, Atlas. It was. Will this it series was. be a similar fiesta? Will we see a Blitzcrank grab onto a Tom Kent under turret at level two? And that was only the tip of the iceberg. Well, I really hope we do because we've got Mad Life on the other desk, Papa Smithy. It would be absolutely perfect. And last time we had Mad Life on the desk was in spring season. You'll remember on that day, Ignar, who plays in our yeah. second series, played Blitzcrank. So hopefully somebody looks up, sees Mad Life, and gets a little bit frisky with the robot. Well, we are into champion select here, guys. If you hadn't noticed, Rakan is going to be banned away first with the Braum being the follow-up ban. And Hanwha have been utilizing the Braum mid for their funnel strategies. So not going to see it this time. And Hanwha's banning one of King Zone and yeah. SK Telecom's funnels in the mid lane and jungle Zaya Rakan duo, the funneling Zaya in that particular case. So seems like they wanted to get a bit more standard. What would that mean for very contested picks? Because something like an Ezreal could become contested if we see Hanwha Life also wanting to go the Marksman route and Cuz will draw a Camille ban. Respect ban shown for his great performance in game two against SKT. In fact, 100% of the bans drawn by Cuz here at the start of this, if you're going off their last series. True. So not going to be able to play uh -oh. what he played in back-to-back -back games. Gone. Yeah, Champion Pool is completely eradicated. Talia, though, is going to continue a 100% status. This time on the bench, not going to have a second game on this patch for the Talia. Of course, she was very, very powerful when we saw her, so it does make a lot of sense. And you know what? Both of the secondary champions are involved with and against funnels. Talia pushing in a funnel comp is very strong, and yeah. Camille being able to ult someone like a Kaiser really makes them frustrated. They're trying to use all the gold and experience you get in oh, funneling. Wow. Aatrox is now becoming a first round ban because Faker and then Yukal have shown that mid lane Aatrox, even with teleport, can be very fearsome. What about the Morgana? That one is the one that I'm the most what surprised. What about the Shen? What about the Nocturne? There's so many things that have been left up. And that's what happens when Hanwha Life on blue side can say, we don't want you to do the crazy stuff. The more standard stuff is going to come through. The so Morgana, Ezreal, some of these other big picks are open. The Shen can be first picked. It's been falling down a little bit. We've seen Shen make it to second round a handful of times. The Zoe also is available with Nocturne banned, and that becomes popular. Morgana priority for roaming supports can be very, very big. We saw BDD and Gorilla duo laning Morgana Blitzcrank in that series against SKT. But with all those things considered, Zoe will be the first pick. And to me, that's risky because BDD has shown the most champions against the Zoe. We know he plays LeBlanc. He was the one to debut the Echo counter pick. Yeah. While both of those are a little bit to the left of the meta, the Swain, which is also a flex pick, is right in the middle of the meta. Yeah, not going to be picking up the Morgana. I thought that Morgana Shen could actually come out here, just roll out that bottom lane again like Griffin showed was so incredibly powerful. But this time around, it's King's own it's Gorilla instead of Lahens, and maybe he wants to go to something else. And it could also be something like a Swain Alistair in the bottom Oh, who would have thought that we've got Trundle versus Sejuani? <sighs> oh, no, again. Yeah. I feel like this is every game. If you see a Sejuani, you don't have that same pressure in order to make things happen. So why not go to Trundle, be able to path around and be very similar. Yep, Morgana, a bit of a no-brainer here for Hanwha Life as well. Not really locking themselves into any sort of strategy at the moment either. That is certainly very flexible and it is going to be locked in. So Hanwha keeping everything up in the air at the moment. What does this mean for King Zone? They should have expected that this would happen. Yasuo, pick for BDD, you would imagine, was taken. Sin Khan play it also. Don't know whether Prey would play it. Would be a question mark. You know what we do? We, we yeah. do know who really likes to play the Aurelia, so. <laughs> yeah. Seems like BDD will be going on the matchup that he lost the reverse matchup of to Chovy, you'll remember, in the series yeah. against Griffin earlier this week. So maybe a point to prove for BDD to Go both on. his old Hyung and Mad Life, who was casting on the Korean broadcast, but also 
to the world that he is not the sort of player to take that loss to Chovy lying down. Kingzone will actually be the ones to ban Ezreal, and that makes you wonder where, in fact, the Swain is going, because with the Aurelia lock-in, it seems like Swain for Prey is actually what's going to happen. And they could also flex these around. Aurelia can go to the bottom side of the map if they want Prey to play it, but it's not necessarily what you feel a Prey champion would be. It's like to have a bit of range. But we'll see. I'm my life still trying to work out what they want to ban, and I can understand why they'd be confused. They're looking for the lane that they can target, and it seems like the support pool is going to be it. Soraka going to be the first ban. Does make you wonder if it will be Morgana support, because Soraka's support does beat Morgana's support, but when you have AP rolled in, it's a little bit harder. Yeah. Outside of very early levels for the support Soraka to take down the bot lane carry Morgana. Barris going to be banned here by Kingzone as well. Ash sort of standing out. Ash and Lucian going to be the 80 carries that I sort of have on my mind for Hanwha Life if they do want to go that route. Of course, Kais is still there. Bit of a favorite for Sang Yoon. And I believe the second game of the night is the 400th for, for Prey. So I wonder if his Ash will come out yeah. in either of the games of this series. So it is a milestone series for Prey. Ooh, Pike. Pike will be banned. You see Morgana and you think, okay, it's going to be a Morgana carry and you can roam around. But it's actually a pike ban towards King Zone, not wanting to deal with even more pick pressure after what they've got. But that means Shen is open, Shen is flexible. We've seen Cuz already be able to be very aggressive with the Shen support. Now we're just waiting on that information of where the Swain and the Aurelia are going and what that means for Praise Champion. I just feel like with the Shen there, it does point the finger towards Swain being on the bottom side. That lane feels a heck of a lot better than the Aurelia Shen, but. We don't necessarily know just yet. Sang Yoon, considering the Vladimir, a lot of 80 carries have hit the bench for him, but Mundo for Linderung is going to be locked away, and I believe, if my memory serves, that he does have a pretty decent win record. This particular top laner and Lucian available here for Sang Yoon if he wants to take it. 2-0 on the Mundo, like you mentioned. No Aatrox available to try to bust it, and we're trying to work out who is going to be going top side, because I don't think Swain or Aurelia particularly want to face the Mundo. Vladimir for Sang Yoon, been a very common pick this season, won't be going for the Lucian, so no marksman in this comp. Answer, what's going on in terms of these lanes? How about a lane counter the Mundo? How about a Darius? Yep, Khan going to be taking the Darius, and I like to see him on more aggressive picks, but 10 seconds to go, still could switch it over to his Jace if he wanted to. Definitely a lot of options here for King Zone, but you can see he's been pretty quiet, made up his mind, Darius going to be the lock-in for the King Zone roster. So. Just to find out where this Swain is going to be going is the last thing that we're going to wait for, but it looks like he will be on the bottom side as we mused earlier on. Given that Zoe versus Aurelia is one of our most played mid lane matchups and Aurelia's damage reduction makes her more able to take paddle stars, you do expect this will be the final way. Kind of surreal for Prey, so close to a milestone to be playing something very far away from his standard Ezreal, but seems like it's going to be that bot lane Swain We've seen the Talia and Shen be a one-rotation duo. It may not be one rotation, but those Swain and Shen uh, CC chains and even just burst damage are pretty fearsome as well. And if you add a Sejuani into that, you've just got CC for days coming out of everywhere. So I do like the idea, but it's just going to be that classic caster off on the bottom side, and Humwa Life have got a lot of protection down there in the bottom lane from the CC. The Black Shield coming in, Sanguine Pool, I mean, you were talking about this at length recently, just Vladimir being so incredibly safe in any position that you put him in. And Hanwha Life have been very creative about lane swaps and teleporting their Vlad to other lanes to hold. They can be very smart and proactive on the map against those teams down the bottom. Can they do it today against King Zone? Just like Griffin showed their medal against King Zone earlier this week. The Mundo's got no one to run at because the Swain is going to be diving in as well. In fact, basically everyone except Zoe is hard committing Atlas. Yep, exactly right, and I like it. I like just the run at them compositions. They're certainly a favorite of mine, but we'll see whether the Mundo is ignorable this game or whether he is just going to take over because we know that no matter what happens, he's really difficult to kill. And you just have to get past him and try and kill the rest of his team. Is that going to be possible is the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got game number one coming up right now. Hanwha Life versus Kingzone Dragon X. Let's hit the rift.
Kingzone fans out in force today already. Holding up their cheer force. I imagine we'll get a camera shot on them. Holding up their cheer force for Prey. Reaches 400 games today. Big milestone for one of the most famous players around. We'll start with the Hanwha Life Cheerfuls. Yep. I believe that's Sung Yoon's parents. They've got sung, we've got certainly some guaranteed Sung Yoon fans in the audience today. 400th day anniversary for good old Hanla Bong, now named Khan, yeah. on the team of King Zone. I just did some mental maths and worked out that one. <laughs> I was less reading comprehension, more. Okay, that's probably that's probably right. Yep, that would make sense. But it's certainly still there's 400s everywhere. It's the 400 day for King Zone Dragon X. Oh, great. Or oh, value. What kind of milestone will it be, Atlas? What well, we're going to find out. Mm hmm. Oh, Life Esports. Walking bot side, and yes, 400 games for Prey. It might even be in game number one. I, was, I believed he was one away, but certainly in this series. And with that big clap, I believe that's the confirmation that 400 games in, of all champions, it's Prey's first game on Swain. <laughs> well, he's going to have a duo lane here as Gorilla finally turns up. But no aggression here from the key Sung Yoon lane. Has been a style of composition that Hanwha Life have shown a lot of prowess with. Against MVP, they were playing much similar to this. Made it look very, very good. Kingzone sort of feel like playing their game slightly as Lava. A fair bit of damage here from BDD. Early level two into a Q dive was what happened there. Someone and Cuz find each other. Remember, My Cuz is God, squishy. Yeah, we've only got a couple of auto attacks left. There it is, the flash over the smite. Not going to be enough. First blood to Songwon. The first blood king strikes at two and a half minutes in the game. They put down a level one ward at the duo lane, and then Songwon just punks Cuz and kills him. Man, that was some aggressive stuff. But press the attack, level two Trundle. Got the first auto. Nowhere to run away to. Cuz goes down. Well, this is a disastrous start for the guy that has been... The protection here for King Zone. You know, when Peanut looks like he's not necessarily having the best time on the rift, Kuz is expected to come in and make things work. Oh, someone that's getting the work done here. Nice stun to stop anything else onto BDD. Does keep his flash there, of course, as well. But you can see he's everywhere so far. I mean, he might as well just go top side and just start dancing and be like, hey, all three lanes going to have some psychological or physical <laughs> warfare coming yep. from a trundle. Kuz is going to have to, uh, yep, definitely. Going jungle safely to level six. This is the option from Trundle we don't see as much. Normally we see Trundle around the counter ganks, being very defensive. When you get the first blood, you don't give too many mundos about the enemy Sejuani. Well, speaking of mundos, Sung Yun is in a whole host of trouble. Gorilla looking for the auto attacks here as Prey is going to help pick it up. In the meantime, however, Kuz looking for someone to find the revenge already. BDD going down very low as Lava is in there, but he just get blade surges his way out. They are going to have a gentleman's agreement, but already one to one at three and a half minutes. It's a bloodthirsty game to start things off. And BDD tried to help Kuz out of that bad matchup, but used both his summoners and they don't get a kill. I believe the CC missed throughout the course of that. So kill in the bot lane, Prey and Gorilla getting a bit of an advantage. We haven't talked about the Shen and Swain duo too much, but it is again a return to these Shen lanes. I feel like Shen plus Mage has turned into this latest kill lane because you just underestimate what can happen, and specifically with Swain, where every CC your ally has is just that much more strong and that much more powerful. Three points into the Shen means he taunts you, you get tugged even closer, and you have to deal with the dodge field to reduce damage any incoming trade. Expertly done by King Zone, and they need that sort of a lead when the jungle's already in a rough spot. Yeah, and Prey actually looking fantastic on this Swain to start things off as well. Teleports his way back in, didn't have quite enough for a catalyst, which is a little bit unfortunate. Blaming Gorilla for the kill steal, I think, for that one. But some control of the lane here for Hanwha Life, and it's going to be Prey waiting for that minion wave to get towards him. Top side of the map, it's going to be Linderung most of the time in exactly this position. But you can see why. The cost of BDD going for that collapse is even bigger than just his summoners being down. Because of that, he's already in a huge CS discrepancy for five minutes. We're talking three minion waves at five minutes to the game. There isn't that many minion waves spawning by five minutes, but he tried to get in there, tried to duel the Trundle. When his CC missed, there was never going to be a kill. Now he's no summoners against both summoners up on the Zoe, and already the sort of matchup where you have to show aggression, not just get poked down. So speaking of poke, Going to cop a little bit of damage there. Pulls out of the way of the Vision of Empire, but that's not the largest source of damage. Taking 20% of your own health bars probably going to mean it's like you got hit by it anyway. 
But Songwon, he's still on his counter jungling oh, method as Cuz. He's three and a bit too. He's not even yeah, close to four. Waiting for this Rift Scuttler to come back up. It's going to be his first one as Songwon going well aggressive underneath this turret. He's trying to get out of the way. He's BDD, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Expertly controlled with the jungle, and Khan cannot teleport in time. Still looking for more as we have the bottom uh -oh. lane collapse, but it's everywhere. Gorilla has to try and taunt his way in, but it's a good black shield to avoid any of that damage. He's Lindero, good, no. he's going to turn up, and in fact, everyone's here that's alive. Dodgefield does, like you say, do some work, but Gorilla still going to suffer defeat. Khan trying to get more, but he's on 200 health, and he can't actually get there. Prey now is going to be the target, and Songwon is just so strong. Good bind, and goodbye, says Key. Really well teamed by the skirmishing there and being able to disengage Khan at every moment. The kiting onto the Darius, clear to see. No dunks even come down, nothing channeled. We're gonna watch the replay. It seems like Gorilla thinks he's gonna cut the team of Hanwha Life Esports off, but they're out of position. Praise on one side, the teleport from Linderung into the back line. There's just too many different things for Kingzone to respect and focus on, and they never get a single dunk. The reset party that Khan had in his mind never came true. Yeah, it was so close to coming true, but oh, this was a disaster for Prey at the end and making sure that Humwa Life certainly destroyed that last fight. Now, can BDD actually find something here? Does get some resets, but isn't going to be diving the Zoe that is so far ahead at the moment. Lana support against the Shen and Swain outside of the one all in we saw happen onto the Vladimir can be just so annoying to deal with. Shen versus ranged champions does struggle. Needs a lot of help from his duo laner. And early game Swain doesn't really do too much. Needs nine points, uh, five points in his Q, so level nine. Yeah, even more now, right? In order to get going, yeah, the early levels are a bit more painful. So the cooldown much longer on the Death's Hand, the Force Lightning Q. Mm -hmm. And someone already is having a party. He's had that Control Ward down forever, so he's suddenly gonna steal away the blue, and that's level six, and probably the Ocean Drake for the Trundle. It feels like three quarters of the jungle belongs to Songwon and has from the beginning of this game is Kuz. Looking for another one. He's only level four on the Sejuani. He gets the flash in though and they will be able to get the stun, but can they do even a modicum of enough damage? Yeah. I'm not entirely sure, but there's the upper hand. That should be able to do it. Fantastic stopwatch, but I have a feeling that's going to be prolonging the inevitable because he gets that ult back and that is going to be the kill secured on the top side. That's but in the mid lane, are we getting this one one more time? Ultimate's going to fly through, gets the disarm onto Songwon, who's tanking the turret, but straight up does not care as they switch it over onto Lava, and it's another beautiful dive. I believe the disarm didn't actually go onto Songwon. He certainly got hit by the ultimate, but didn't step over one of the blades and was able to make it happen. We'll need the replay to confirm that. But they're just going to whack away on this turret. Key's here. Mid yeah. lane, first brick comes through from Hanwha, and whatever good things happen topside, they're very quickly and summarily dismissed by Hanwha Life Esports. And look, if they lose this game now, it will be the first time they've lost whilst picking up first brick, and it already is the first time that they've picked up the mid lane as their first turret of the game as well. So see whether we're going to have a new stat there as we have a look at it. Look, we can just be always... Uh, Complimented by the OGN stats team. They've been on the ball today, showing Mad Live, showing stats. Yeah. We've got the psychic link going on as Khan is really happy about getting a kill. Linderong tried to play it as if he was dealing with a Skarner, where sometimes you can actually fizzle the Skarner ultimate by using yeah. a stasis effect. That doesn't work for Darius. He gets to dunk you afterwards. So just wasting the stopwatch, hoping that cooldowns wouldn't be up. They were, so goodbye. Goes Linderong. Does mean he's eminently di diveable when we see level six hit on Kaz. And good news, he has it. So I think it's time to play around where you're strong, which for now is top seven. Certainly is. And it's certainly not in the jungle. 1 0 and 4 now for Songwon. 2 0 and 1 after Lava has been helped out with the camp on BDD. And once again, BDD is having a rough time on this Aurelia. I feel like they keep picking it and keep picking it. And yes, historically it has been good, but. The last few times that he's picked it up, it has not been the best experience for the mid laner of Kingzone. To me, it's less about the pick and more about his decision making. I think BDD traditionally has been fantastic at knowing when to go in and when not to commit. But this season, we're seeing him wear carries even more. Remember before, Galio, Talia, roaming. Roaming, he's a star, we know that. But actually playing for himself, which Aurelia represents, has been a newer thing for BDD to develop. So I think keep having him play the Aurelia. He'll get his head around it. He's too talented not to. But for now, when he plays these champions, you can see the discrepancy in his play level. And he needs to develop that because the meta will not always allow roaming champions 
Take me back to MSI. If he didn't have his great Aurelia performances, a lot of the champions he played in spring were Oh, yeah. Hurt. That's definitely true. So the top side of the map, Linderon getting completely zoned. His wave is in absolutely the worst possible position for any top laner that's feeling behind and under pressure. So this is definitely where Kingzone, like you say, are strong. But that does mean that Humwa Life Esports are going to utilize that where they are strong. Take down the Dragon on the bottom side to get that first one of the game. Has been able to close the experience gap. So that's at least a little bit of good news for Kingzone. But otherwise, it's a bit of disarray. We're going to see... The only CS lead of relevance in the top side. That control ward is the most obvious turret dive ward. But speaking of turret dives, everyone's packing up and going somewhere, Atlas. It, apparently it's vacation season. Yeah, apparently Khan is going to have some trouble here on the top side as well. Exhaust comes down, but Trouble Bubble is going to land. The Paddle Star comes in and Lava's going to pick up that kill with a one-two punch. All too easy, and now that turret is under fire. Only a few minions, so may not get it right here. But that is going to be revenge, finally, for Linderong. Not a good use of the Shen ultimate either. He was always going to be dead in that scenario. The moment that the trouble bubble hit through the turret, there was yeah. no way that Shen ultimate 300 extra health was going to matter. Seen the counter roam bot side, but the tempo advantage from the level 2 kill by the Trundle has been only on the life of Hanwha Life Esports. Sung Yun backs off. He's at Aldous takes some Krugs. It's fine to give a bit of turret damage. You're not worried about Swain and Shen ripping through your turret. No, they're doing the best they can, but yeah, you're right. Nothing really doing there. Still, it's a 26 CS lead here for Khan, but he just lost his tower. All of that control that he was boasting earlier on is not there. And now if they come and try and take him down, there's no turret to run back to. So he cannot move that far up the lane anymore. Songwon very easily takes down Shelly. He's going to be in his back pocket for use another time. But out of turrets are at a premium here for Humble Life. They've only got one more remaining. Just two different series in a week. Kingzone have been a step behind their opponents. Griffin had their number easily. Uh, at the start of this week, you could tell on Tuesday that Griffin just knew what to expect from Peanut in particular and were able to just dismantle him. Even his Nidalee game in game number two, he was out of sorts. And here we're seeing from the early war that was turned into an easy kill on Cuz, feels like Songwon has Cuz's number. Songwon is one of our best early game junglers. That's where he really thrives, his early game yeah. and is also his synergy with Linderong on the top side. And so far, Humble Life Esports have read Kingzone like a book to the tune of a 3,300 gold lead. And the top laning matchup of Mundo versus Darius ended by the top turret going down. Exactly right. And you look at the compositions here and you feel really great for, as Hanwha Life moving into the later stages of the game. They've got the Vladimir, they've got the Mundo, even Trundle is fantastic. When there's a champion like a Sejuani there who is going to be getting really tanky, no one's really tanky when there's a Trundle on your team. They've got the Zoe there to boot. So it's a struggle street here for Kingzone Dragon X. And now Shelly is going to get to work on this last remaining in, uh, outer turret like we were talking about earlier on. Linderong's in trouble. The ult flies down as Khan gets himself a flash. Thankfully, the sadism going to be enough and the passive not going to take down the Mundo. But on the bottom side, certainly a win for Hanwha. 3-0 in terms of the turrets being taken. And that's a pretty big problem for the side of Kingzone. When you're talking about late game, I agree with you. There's a lot of good tools on the side of Hanwha Life. But to me, the difference is, is Zoe a threat and is Zoe not a threat when it comes to late game? Because otherwise, Kingzone gets their items, piles in into basically melee range and make good things happen. I think there is a tipping point for Kingzone, but it's very unlikely to come true because Zoe is already the benefactor of a big bounty of early game kills, 3-0-1. And the time that Kingzone needs in order to hit relevant items, to be able to ignore Paddle Stars and the map control, to not just get flanked by a Vladimir, those are things that right now, with the first 15 minutes going the way they did, it's looking tricky for Kingzone to set up. Yeah. See whether they can get there. 4,000 gold is the approaching lead. This trouble Bubble very close to landing on the Kuz. Does get a lot of damage in there with the help of his dash cannon. No electrocute on Lava for the... Bonus burst that seems to one rotation people easier. This is going to be yeah. the choice versus melees. Honestly, in solo lanes, when you're ranged versus melee, it's almost always correct to go into summoner airy for more reliable harass on auto attacks and spells. Yep. Well, Prey down here without a turret does need to make sure that there are people around to keep him alive, even though it is just a 1v1 with Song Yoon. And we need to be sure 400 games in whether Prey can pull off Swain in team fights. We've seen a couple of Swain bot lanes who just didn't really shoulder initiation in the way they needed to. 
You can say for Prey that, especially on the Longju days, I think of Spring when the team was struggling, it was if Prey initiates, they win. If they don't yeah. have Prey to initiate, they just straight up lost. It's for Ash and Varus with the two big picks then. It's still a bit different to be a champion that needs to get very down and dirty. They need to get in there in pretty short range. So we'll wait and see. May not be relevant if uh, Anwar Live keeps snowballing. Everyone coming together and coalescing in. High damage dealt overall for the side of Hanwha Life. Curiously, the only person who hasn't been able to join is the Vladimir. He'll get in there later. He certainly will. He certainly will. I just want to um, sort of piggyback on your point there as well based on Prey because I think a lot of uh, why we've seen a lot of these AD carries struggling with the engage is because they don't necessarily have the mind for it. They've never had to have the mind for sure. it. Whereas Prey, he always has. He always has been sort of the older player on the team that knows when to start a fight, why to start a fight. So I think that that really does help him out with that particular question. And I agree with you on the champions that he usually plays, but does he know all the damage calculations of a full stack demon flare? Does he know when to go and how tanky he is in every scenario swing? The answer is no. There's no way he can oh, know yeah, yeah. every permutation. You know he knows every permutation of every build of Ash and Varus, and that's where the doubt comes in, because I agree, Prey is the initiating AD carry. If you had to have one, put him in the dictionary, it's going to be Prey. But in this scenario where they're behind on Swain, where he's done decently but not outstanding, there's other variables up in the air. Yeah. Well, only one way to find out as we approach 20 minutes into this game. It's going to be Hanwha Life Esports continuing down this Drake removal. Vision of Empire is going to spot it, but that is not going to do anything. They are going to be able to snap that one up. So an Ocean and an Infernal over the side of Hanwha. And Kuz just wandering around, trying to find somewhere to return to relevance. He has caught back up when it comes to farm. Then Drungs, you know, in a dog matchup. So he's down plenty of CS, but yeah. if he keeps getting giant spelts, eventually it doesn't matter. Now, Darius can also turn around a losing game. A Freak of Freaks versus MVP yesterday. Oh, yeah. Where Keen certainly showed us that. Yeah. Keen was the most down. He was totally obliterated in lane, but one triple kill on a team fight later, good things happened. The team fight dream is certainly alive. Kings don't have a team fight comp, so wait and see what can happen there. But gold lead may be grown. As that's a lot of control wards. Yep. They do kill one, though. As there's a trouble bubble. Lava wants to be able to pop that. In there, Binding not going to land though, and that's just a bit of the health bar of Khan. But I have a feeling with uh, this Control Ward investment, they know that no one can see that uh, Brambleback going down. The bubble misses. King Zone are in position to try and fight for this inner turret, which is exactly where Hanwha Life are. Gorilla turns up first. We'll take a bit of damage here, but can they actually clear out the minion wave is the question. Khan gonna turn back up, making this one a 4v4. BDD wants this fight, but he has to flash out of the way when that paddle star comes in. Sung Yoon now in with the flank. Can he get there at the right time, or will they just secure the turret? I think the answer is neither as they run out of minions. Sung Yoon was considering the dive. Probably smart not to fully engage. One of the few ways it could actually turn this game around was a similar play like we saw from MVP yesterday, throwing a lead in this scenario against Adarius. But you know why you make this play, Atlas? Because the only real wave clear is to Swain Q. There's really nothing else on this team. And Swain isn't even topside. So sieging inner turrets at 19 minutes against any conventional comp is a big no-no. Against this comp, a reliable option for Hanwha Life Esports. Yeah. And Prey actually moved to the mid lane there as well, going to continue this 1v1 against Sang Yoon. Thankfully, Gorilla and BDD are down here to lend a hand as well. But that tower still remains standing. Three turrets to zero in favor of Hanwha Life still. And we've got a couple of Trinity forces coming in here for King's own. They find a time to fight. They're not really any closer to getting a turret. Sure, there's turret damage in lanes, but getting the sort of vision that you need to fully walk up to a turret and commit means you need to know where the enemy is, where they are on the map at camps, that they're not doing the Baron, which spawns in 15 seconds. And right now, you can see the only triangle of vision they have is around their own red side jungle. And they didn't fully control that. So in terms of map control, Kings don't have very, very little. That means that for now, standing gold is going to be impossible for them to collect. And if they had been able to collect it, it would actually answer a lot of the gold lead for Hanwha Life Esports. Yeah, and talking of gold lead, it is only going to be 3,000 gold still. Hasn't changed for about 10 minutes. So King Zone have at least been able to steady the ship, stop falling further behind. King Zone need to find a way to get map control and then 1-3-1. Because they still do have Aurelia Darius as side laners and Zoe has nowhere to go if a 1-3-1 can be created. I want Life Esports to say, we walk through control wards and siege with Zoe, 
and that's somewhere where King Zone will be very frustrating. Yeah, now they do have prey, but there was no health on that turret, so Inner Turret is going to be brute forced. Here by Hanwha Life, continuing to build that lead. Trellius by Morgana, just to help with the speed of the rotation to mid lane, because the minion wave is coming up. We're not going to be able to pick that one up. I like it for keeping in range of the Soul Shackles as well, so not a bad move. And uh, speeding up your Vladimir feels good. But here's the first turret. And it was in the split push like you were talking about, the Darius. Certainly the strongest member of this team. Able to take that one down. Seeing Hama Life continue to walk up. Again, the wave that we mentioned is still a problem for King Zone. King Zone can only engage to break this. Khan will do damage, but doesn't have kill threat onto the Mundo, you'd say at this point. Unless uh, he does still have that ultimate available, and when the sadism wears out, it will be certainly a moment where he could threaten. But you're right, doesn't feel too easy. And we're running closer moments because what happens when Warmogs comes in is the first rotation, he ults the second rotation, he has Warmogs, and you just never actually kill the Mundo. So, timer there. Yep. Well, they're going to go for this time as Gorilla takes a lot of damage but does save himself with that Spirit's Refuge. But look at this, they just focus the yep. turret and take this one down. It's sieging so well with a composition that doesn't scream to you, we can siege super well. But the enemy team is so poor against siege that they actually do have the equivalent of a great siege comp. They are definitely playing this game correctly because they're saying to King Zone, we're going to walk up to inner turrets at 19 minutes. Usually that means an initiation, and King Zone have a very strong team fight comp. But King Zone don't have the items, and they are behind in gold. They know that if they actually lose a team fight, the game could be close to over. They lose an inhibitor turret and a Baron. The Baron comes up, and their wave clear was already an issue pre Baron. That might yeah. just be the end of the game for King Zone. So, I want Life Esports keeping up the pressure. Teams have struggled with this in the LCK. We saw our bottom teams yesterday be unable to convert on good early games. I want Life Esports again separating themselves from the bottom of the table, showing why they are one of the contenders for playoffs. Yeah, and also demonstrating it in uh, the items that they picked up as well. That Warmogs you were talking about now in for Linderung. You've got the Luden's Echo as well as Morella Nomicon done for Lava, and he's very close to getting that Zonya's Hourglass. So that stopwatch will repair itself if he does have to use it before that one does come in. And Rabidon's Death Cap plus uh, the Spellbinder as well coming in for Sangyun. This is real scary now for King Zone. Really interesting interaction that we saw that may not be relevant to this game is we saw, I believe it was Fly, uh, Zonia's twice in a team fight. And the mechanic there is if you have the stopwatch from Runes and then buy ah. a Zonia straight up, i.e. don't buy the second stopwatch, you can actually use both independently in a team fight. Huh. Fun fact for the viewers at home. That's interesting. It's okay. because the one from Runes is classified as a different item. Okay. Well, we'll see whether that does actually play a part in this particular game. There's always, there's already been a lot of going golden on this patch. People really enjoying the stopwatches. So. They definitely are. It is back in the meta for sure, and we're only going to see more of them on 8.13. Yeah. Well, still a couple of them here for the bottom lane of King Zone do remain. There's uh, just the one for Lava on the side of Hanwha Life. King Zone now. Group of four, and there's Kuz getting caught out. Hemoplay going to come down as well, but it's only on a couple of the tanks. Ultimate going to go wide from BDD, which could be huge as Prey running away with his ultimate up. He might have to sacrifice himself here as Khan finally does turn up to this battle, but it's five versus five, and they've taken a lot of damage. Khan now running out, and he's going to explode. Songwon going to pick up that kill as Prey getting himself away from the fight, but he does have the flash, but is he just going to die? And he is. Not going to invest it. Knew that if he jumped into that Dragon Pit, he was still dead. Humwa Life, they're going to grab a couple of kills and lose no one. Pretty poor team fight from King Zone. Khan walked up first as the Darius. And even after the Apprehend, he should have known that he was very, very susceptible to being turned on. He's squishy, doesn't have a lot of items. He goes down and Prey says, well, if I flash, I'm still dead. So, yeah. just not to use the summoner. Kaz is going to make the worst trade you could ever make, a 25-minute Ocean Drake for the Baron. But they can't contest the Baron, so Baron to the side of Hanwha eventually. Maybe an inner turret for Aurelia as a little bit of a sweetener for King Zone. Yeah, so, you know, the, the consolation prize that you don't really feel very good about as Baron is certainly going to be taken here. 206 now for Song 100% kill contribution. Takes down the Baron for them as well. It's just an incredible performance on this trundle. Now it's only a team fight super play from King Zone, or they lose because the Baron buff makes their sieging problems even bigger. Watch the replay. Prey's in the front. 
obviously tanky, but when BDD misses his ult, they only really have Sejuani ult as a turn tool. That's why I'm really curious about Khan's decision. He walks in late after everything is down, including the ultimate from the Swain, and he just gets turned on and dies. Like, I don't understand why he's going that far forward. The rest of the team was doing their best to disengage. Maybe Prey would have died regardless, but they give away a double kill, a Baron, from just some poor teamfight execution from Kingza. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication as well, as at least Prey did manage to do a lot of damage. But uh, that's not what they need right now. They need to actually win these fights. And if you do a lot of damage to Linderung, he's just not going to care. Honestly, both teams are about the damage, and there is a lot more on the side of Hamo Life than there is on the side of Kingzone. So only a super play, only amazing, an immaculate execution to me is a way to get back in because of that item disadvantage. And Hamo Life once again being clean, as clean as their performance against MVP, I would say, yeah. in terms of how they played this one out. And now they're looking to break the base. Yeah, and they're going to do so extraordinarily fast. Look at those chunks as now the inhibitor will fall. Darius making his way back because they're scared that Hanwha Life are just going to win the game off this push. They can certainly dive. Yep, never move. Not going to land as the binding is dodged by Prey. Now Kingzone with five members are going to be able to stave off the push, but it's only going to get harder and harder from here as there's more money in the back pockets of Hanwha Life and still a minute and a half of that Baron. They have all the options, Atlas. They could have chosen for a dive. They have Mundo, they have Vlad. They have many ways to tank and also reset aggro. They have a huge gold lead. Probably unnecessary. Now they catch Khan. Yep, Zongwan by himself is still a force to be reckoned with as that trouble bubble went for a long way because using that ult just to try and stop the engage is definitely not what you want as the Sejuani demonstrating the hard times that Kingzone are going through now. Another inhibitor turret under fire. Inhibitor sure to go down after this. It just doesn't feel like there are many options for Kingzone. Sitting underneath this turret, BDD wants to fight this one out again. He does have the ult. His Kuz has to get himself the hell out of the way. Good never move, but it's onto Linderung. And he straight up doesn't care. The Sadism comes in. Ultimate going to land here from BDD this time, and he still hasn't taken any relevant damage. Sangyu comes in with the ultimate, and Gorilla and Kuz, they're going to explode. Good stopwatch saves Gorilla, but for how long is the question? Praise Gold in the middle of the fight, but he's still going to go down. It's Sangyun that's just getting most of these, doing all the damage, and Lava doesn't even fall. Are they immortal? What's happening? BDD proves that it's no, but that's going to still be the near ace as Gorilla has to watch on in horror. And Hanwha Life going for the end. They will win the game here. Dominant game one from Hanwha Life Esports ever since they put down the ward and converted it into a kill for the Trundle. They've run this game, and Kingzone have watched on in horror as the 400th game for Prey will be a defeat. Well... Nexus does fall, it was fantastically played out, but we're looking at the jungle. Like you say, it's all about that vision control at the beginning, and Kuz getting put behind just felt like Kingzone playing without tempo has always been a thing that they've struggled with a little bit. If Kingzone can start off a game strongly and be the proactive team that has the advantage, they often suffocate you and you can't do anything. But it's been these sorts of games where they've started from a hiccup they haven't been able to turn around. And I'm even willing to rewind further than that and say that their draft, to me, I'm going to use a word that's not always used in a derogatory fashion. I'm going to use it here. It was too fancy for me. It felt like yeah. a really fancy draft where, ooh, we have Swain. You guys know about BDD Swain. What about Prey? You understand why, because mages go in the bot lane. But remember, when they put off the sick comp, it was BDD on Morgana, not Prey on Morgana. Prey is a marksman player. They make him onto the Swain, they don't really know how to convert around it, and then one thing changes in the game, which is the Sejuani falling far behind, and then you have very few things to fall back on, because you don't have Ezreal, you don't have the fallback patterns. More mistakes, more mistakes, and a loss for Kingzone Dragon X. Well, is it all going to change in the draft is the question. We have to remember that blue side is where a lot of these teams thrive when they can create these compositions with first pick priority and then being able to round out those first three a little bit earlier on. Certainly not down and out just yet for Kingzone Dragon X as we're going to have a look at the damage. Certainly a hell of a lot for Lava and a decent job from Prey who was the only one with any ranged harass to speak of. Certainly still able to show that he can play the Swain but otherwise not a lot of great signs here for Kingzone. The Aurelia damage being only 2.5k is standing out as something that we really need to work on. 
Could have stuck with the Swain in the mid lane. Could have gone for a different counter pick into the Zoe. He loves the Aurelia, but increasingly not working out for BDD. Yeah, and I feel like the Anivia is another thing that he did look very, very good on against SKT. It's tricky against Zoe, though. Yeah, true. But interesting stuff. I think King Zone should throw out some of the innovation and go back to some of those old standbys for game number two. Yep, I think that maybe we're going to be looking at some AD carries, but guys, a short break, and we'll come back and find out.